Jane Runner and welcome to my channel. Merry Christmas! Today is Monday the 25th of December and hello and welcome especially to all new and returning viewers and if by chance you've stumbled across this channel this channel is all about cross stitch with a bit of life stuff thrown in and I am disorganized, which is part of why I am recording this episode on Christmas Day and what can I say, life. <laughs> so this particular episode is very much going to be as Christmas themed as I can make it. There will be some summery themed uh, pieces as well, which at the moment is kind, kind of funny because I'm in Canberra today and the weather is overcast. It is a bit cool, which I think actually is quite nice. It means that life is comfortable and it means that we can enjoy that hot Christmas lunch just that little bit more compared with many, many summers gone by, especially Christmas days gone by where it has been typically very hot and whoever it is that's in the kitchen is getting annoyed at everyone else for always coming going in between doors and the flies getting in and Aussie summers, what can I say? So this is where I am thankful that it is just a little bit cooler and a little bit more comfortable and I'm looking forward to spending the lunch and evening with uh, my family and thankfully it's been uh, early enough where my boyfriend and I have been able to open presents and exchange presents and hugs and all the rest so so that's all good and let's get into the stitching side of stuff first summery themed and non-Christmas themed piece that I have to share with you is the Summer in Stars Hollow Stitching Retreat piece and unfortunately I don't have a cover piece to share with you to show how it will look when it's completed. The fun thing with this piece is seeing it come together though and I've been focusing mostly around this area where it's a bit of the windows and I think it's possibly some of the stairs or the part of the building. I'm not sure what else to call it right now. And at the moment I'm stitching this two over two. So two strands of cotton over two fabric squares and I'm stitching this on 28 count linen and one of the things that I'm really enjoying with this piece is that it feels a little bit like a choose your own adventure piece in the sense that I am following the chart as much as I possibly can with what I'm stitching. I'm changing out certain colours because I don't have some of the specialty threads in my stash that are in the, the chart and whilst I could press some buttons or I could go and visit a store and purchase the the extra colors I am enjoying using some of the colors that are already in my stash and one example is the the really vibrant blue that I have over here where the background and even the the slightly lighter blue they aren't the called for colors in the in the piece however what I've been trying to do is match as closely as I can to the the charter design and what I do have in my stash and I'm hoping that it all comes together. So far I think it is working out really well and I'm looking forward to working on this piece a bit more, especially in the new calendar year. So it may maybe February when I next work on this piece because at the end of this episode I'll also share some of my plans on what I'm aiming to do for the month of January at least. So the next chart and or work in progress that I have to share with you is another summer themed non-Christmas design and this is one of my own designs and it's called I Count My Lucky Stars and with this particular piece, 
I had completely forgotten about it in the sense that when I had I had caught up with my extended family, I think it was nearly yeah, last roughly this time last week. So it was around the seventeenth of December, and I was talking with one of my cousins about the fact that I've got this channel and that I'm very much into cross stitch and trying to design cross stitch patterns and all of that fun stuff. And at one stage he'd asked if I do any stitching that is focusing on just a, a small group of colors. So maybe a maximum of seven or, or 10 colors. And initially I said no, because I was predominantly thinking of a lot of my larger pieces, such as Dewdrop Daisy or some of the other pieces that you've seen throughout most of this year. And I completely forgotten about I Count My Lucky Stars and that I had charted it being monochromatic and having the aim of whoever stitches this, being able to use whatever colours they want that they have in their stash. So an example is I have the colours I have the colour called Tequila Sunrise and I'd use Tequila Sunrise to stitch the quote where it says, I count my lucky stars every day that you are in my life and having the aim of having a couple of different shades of blue to stitch the border and resulting in perhaps maybe three colours maximum being used in, in this chart. And as part of me forgetting about this piece initially and I guess some of the other charts that are perhaps in, in my collection as well, I started talking about some plans that I have for November next year and it is very much in the early stages of planning what the charts are going to be, what they're going to look like and a few extra pieces of promotional sort of stuff or awareness sort of stuff that I'm aiming to do in November. So please hang around for that in terms of making sure that you subscribe, like and everything in between because as we get closer to November, I'll be able to start sharing some more of these plans that are flowing floating around in my head at the moment and the other things that are going on in the background. So I'm really looking forward to being able to sharing with you the thoughts and ideas that I've got for November. That's it. I now would love to really get into the Christmas theme stitching that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. Just before I get into the Christmas stitching, I completely forgot to talk about what I actually worked on for I Count My Lucky Stars. So I have worked just a little bit more on this blue section that we have here and I need to get a lot more work done on that section so it makes a bit more sense as to what it's meant to be. To put into context, just up near the, the letter Y for my I've been working a bit on the, the leaf that we see up in that corner there for the border. So I've been using a DMC thread and I've completely forgotten the actual DMC number. I do know that it starts with 37, but I can't remember if it's 3765. No, definitely not 3765. I do remember what the colour is there. It's like a really light light almost white creamy white color anyway that's beside the the point um i'm actually happy with with this particular shade of blue and i'm using one strand over one fabric square doing full cross and i i guess eventually i'll get around to frogging out this particular section here because for anyone who hasn't seen me talk about this piece much I was trying out a little bit of this razzle dazzle thread that is really beautiful I I love touching it it's got this really beautiful silky feel about it and it is a thread that 
is fairly thick in the sense that it's perhaps two, two, more than two, perhaps three, three strands that are sort of twisted together to make that one, one bit of thread. I'm not quite sure how to explain it exactly because unfortunately I don't have the spool with me at the moment. That said, I did learn that it is thick enough to get some really good coverage as tent stitch. So that's the, the tent stitch is also known as the half stitch, so half of a full cross. And it gives really good coverage if I'm stitching it over one fabric square on the 28 count fabric. However, I, I found that it's just not quite suitable for this particular project. And I've learned that it may work better if I'm using that type of thread on perhaps 14 count Ada or perhaps even a large, uh, small count. So maybe if it was, uh, say, 10 count or 11 count or something like that, then where the holes are a lot larger in the fabric, that that's where I think that particular strands or that particular thread, I think, would work beautifully. So I'm sure I'll eventually get there and I'll eventually find the right piece and the right fabric for that thread. So it was a really good learning curve for me on that one. And I will just be cursing a bit when I get to the stage of needing to frog it. Okay, now I'm definitely going to jump in to the Christmas stitching and what I've been working on. Okay, the first Christmas piece that I have to share with you is one that I've nicknamed Christmas Owls. And in the magazine that I'm about to share with you, they've called it Christmas Cuddles. Either way, when you see the picture, you'll understand where I'm coming from. So this particular piece is out of the world of cross stitching and it's issue number 274. And the first piece that I've been working out of this magazine is Christmas Cuddles, also known as the Christmas Owls. And this particular piece has been designed by Jenny Barton and for most of the, the piece or majority of it, I am using all of the called for colors and required fabric and, and so forth. The personalization has been the fabric count. So this particular piece recommends that we use either 14 count Ada or 28 count even weave. And that if we're going to use the 28 count even weave, that we stitch uh, two strands of cotton over two fabric squares. So ultimately it ends up being the same size. What I've done is I've used some 18 count Ada that I've got in my collection and this is where I'm at so far. And unfortunately, this particular piece hasn't come up in my Christmas theme stitching as yet. So to put into context, what I've been doing for the majority of December is using this decision maker wheel app on my phone and in that particular wheel that I created I've entered in all of the Christmas themed or summer Christmas summer themed pieces that I would either like to start working on or I would like to put more work into the work in progress so this is the the latter this is one that I started perhaps a couple of years ago and this year it has featured a little bit in the AFL stitching challenge that I've been doing and I'm keen to do next year as well. So majority of the work has been done during the earlier stages of this year. Hopefully I can spin, spin the world today because I haven't yet and this will come up or it'll hopefully come up over the next few days and if by chance it hasn't, I know that my aim will be as part of trying to stay up late on New Year's Eve. I'll be working on all the pieces that haven't seen as much love as what I would have liked for the month of December in terms of the Christmas themed pieces. 
so fingers crossed it all works out and I get to, to put a lot more work into this piece while I can. While I'm still talking about the World of Cross Stitching magazine, there is another piece out of here that I've been doing a little bit of work on for the, the Christmas themed stitching for December and it's called Let It Snow. And Let It Snow is, this particular Let It Snow is designed by Jenny Vanderweil. And this is, I guess, what it could look like if I stitched it as charted. So the biggest, biggest changes that I've done with this piece is that I am using some different coloured fabric to what has been recommended for this piece and I'm not stitching the entire piece. So to put into context, I'll actually find the piece and share it with you. I'm stitching this on the 18 count navy blue Ada, which is pretty much the same fabric as the Christmas Owls. And the significant difference for, for this piece compared with the recommended chart is I, for the fabric cut here so I'm not going to be stitching all of the snowflakes that we see on the side here. I do have the fabric folded over on this side here however I'm using that as a guide for where the border for this piece is going to be. So what I'm doing is just stitching the snowflakes below the quote and above the quote and that's it. I will be using the not using but stitching the snowflakes that are beads as well so with that in mind this with this particular piece when it focuses there we go there are some snowflakes that or even just single beads that are floating around so that's where I'll definitely be making the most of some of the Mill Hill beads that are seed beads that I have in my stash from other projects that I've worked on and I'm looking forward to seeing how that works and I have no doubt that it'll be fine because with the dark fabric these beads are just going to pop and just stand out really well. So to put into context these are um some of the beads that i'd like to use in the piece for the snowflakes or even if these are just some of the single seeds beads whatever words i'm trying to find right now that will be floating around on the chart so the fun part is trying to find the special needle that i need for beading if by chance you've never done any beading through cross stitch or other kinds of crafts, there's a special needle that we can buy from a craft store or haberdashery section of say Spotlight Link Craft or wherever, wherever your crafting supply store might be. And these particular needles, they are a lot thinner than the standard needle that we might use for our embroidery and cross stitch and such. They've got a little bit more flexibility about them and they are designed in a way that the the beads, especially some of these small ones that have a very small hole in the middle of them and it doesn't quite, what I'm trying to show, it doesn't quite do it justice. Anyway, the point is that the beading needle is going to make my life 10 times easier than trying to struggle with any of the needles that I currently have. One of the good things with me being here in Canberra is that I have a feeling that I might have some of the needles here. If not, I've got an idea of where they might be back up at Wollongong, my second home. Worst case scenario is that I'm going to have to go to a craft store and that's going to be just horrible. It's going to be devastating. It, it's going to be a case where I may end up walking away not just with the, the beading needles, I might end up walking away with a heap more fabric, I might walk away with some, some more threads and charts and 
other things that are going to make my life absolutely miserable because of the stitching and that it is my life. But anyway, it is going to be all right. It is going to be all good because as many of us say in the stitching world that a fabric or thread or a chart cannot cannot travel on its own regardless of whether it is something we've purchased online or if it is something that we have purchased in person there is just something about the possibility of loneliness or, or anything in in that particular case so that's where i am looking forward to just seeing how i can get the beading done and let it snow and seeing it come to life the other personalizations that I've done with Let It Snow is the, I guess, choice or decisions with the snowflakes that we see. With the, the chart, it is recommended that I use the, the B5200 or other light colored thread for the snowflakes. And what I've decided to do is use some of the variegated threads that I have received in the different stitching boxes that I have purchased. So majority of them have been from the Gilmore Girls uh, stitching retreat boxes and Colour and Cotton has put together some really beautiful threads. So with one of the flosses, not flosses, with some of the full cross snowflakes rather, I've used Colour and Cotton's Love Rocket and it's a really subtle gray that goes from a light gray to a slightly darker gray and then fades out into a lighter gray again and it doesn't initially seem like there's much of a, a color difference when i've stitched the the snowflakes but then when i have another look at it i can start to see a bit of the differences there then with some of the small snowflakes that are back stitched i've been using the other colouring cotton floss thread called 403 AM and this is again a really light gentle blue and I love the contrast that it is giving with this piece so I'm really looking forward to getting it done and just admiring the work of it okay so the next couple of pieces that I have to share with you, the first one is a new start and it is a chart that I've had in my stash for a while and I just have either forgotten about it or seen it and then I've had other, other distractions come along. So this particular chart is called Meowie Christmas and it is by the, the company called Custom Crafts Inc. It is the same business that I have been, oh, there's been a couple of other pieces. Midnight Glow is the immediate one that comes to mind and Midnight Glow is that beautiful white horse that I just need to stitch perhaps two more pages and then I'm done. So perhaps in the next five years, I'll have that piece finished. The other chart that I had stitched that was of custom crafts, it is that tiger picture that I stitched for my best mate uh, for her 40th, 40th birthday in October. And I just love how that piece came together, especially towards the end where I chose to personalize it and change the amber colored eyes out and did some floss drops and i not floss drops floss toss and chose some different shades of blue for the eyes instead and it just turned out beautifully i'm, I'm really happy with how that turned out and i framed it up myself and to the best of my knowledge she she absolutely loves the piece so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy on that one. That said, with a Meowie Christmas, it is one that has surprised me a bit in the sense that it has some backstitch in it and majority of the custom craft charts don't have backstitch in them. So for this piece, it does have backstitch for um, the letter here where it says for Santa 
and then it's back stitches for the eyebrows and the the whiskers for the cats so that's really really cute and what i've decided to do is stitch this on 14 count ada and this is where i'm at so far i've started up in the top left corner and what we're seeing here is roughly a day's work and i'm really enjoying this piece and i would love to be able to get some more work put into it so if it doesn't come up in the spins for the next few days i'm hoping i can get some more work put into it um, on new year's eve fingers crossed the next chart that I have to share with you is a new start, or new start for me, and it's a Tilton's, Tilton's Craft, Tilton Crafts chart, and it is a Merry Colourful Christmas. And I'm just going to bring up the cover page. Okay. So this is what it'll look like when it's done. And as busy as this piece is, I love that I can start up in the top left corner of it and not get bored with what I'm stitching compared with some of the other tool and craft charts that I have started working on. And this is where I'm at so far. I've started in the top left corner and I am stitching this one over one. So one strand of cotton over the one fabric square and my apologies for that being being quite blurry. It's not focusing quite right. Anyway, again, this piece might be an excuse for me to go to the shops and get some of the colours that I don't necessarily have with me. So I am travelling at the moment and I have brought with me about... 80% of my cross stitching stash as far as my threads are concerned. And it is usually Murphy's Law that I'll get so far with the piece and it'll require me to have a colour that I haven't brought with me. And as much as I could perhaps still work around the spaces where that colour would be, my counting doesn't always work very well which means that i'll have the best of intentions of skipping a square or however many squares i need where that color would be i did do that at one point with this piece and i was out by one square and it i could have tried to fudge it and work with the mistake it was just going to take too much time and effort for me to work around that mistake which is where mr frog came and visited me and I had to rip it out and restitch the the mistake that I made and it, it all worked out in the end. So I'm looking forward to hopefully putting a bit more work into this piece before the end of this calendar year. This next piece that I have to share with you is a really cute one and one that I've enjoyed stitching quite a lot and it's called Scotty Dog Sampler. And Scotty Dog Sampler is out of a magazine called The Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas. And it is volume 19 from the year 2018. And this particular magazine has been one of the best investments or purchases that I've made in, in recent years because this magazine has surprised me by the amount of use I've gotten out of it and how many charts out of this particular magazine that I have stitched multiple times because I've enjoyed the pieces so much. So with Scotty Dog Sampler, this is what it will roughly look like when I'm done and it is designed by Lucy Heaton and it is really cute. It is super cute and i have very much personalized this piece and first of all it's fabric that i've personalized this is 28 count joblin linen and this particular fabric is an absolute dream to stitch on for starters it is soft it is 
really easy, flexible, pliable, and really gentle to work with. And it is such a treat to work on when I'm switching between other types of linen and even weave and Ada, especially Ada, because Ada can be such a, a rough, coarse and stiff type of fabric and in some occasions can eventually become flexible as I guess the oils from my hands and the warmth of my hands I guess make it a little bit more flexible but this one straight off the bat is uh, just so gentle and easy to stitch on so with these Scotty dogs I have also personalized these in the sense that I have tried to use as many of the colors as the chart calls for so with the Scotty dogs that are the darker colors they're using the DMC threads of 3977 and 414 roughly that and the lighter dogs I've actually used some other colors that I have in my stash that are still DMC threads but I've been lazy and haven't been bothered to go and find the actual colors the chart calls for. That said, I don't think it's made that much of a difference because it's still light colors. You can still see a little bit of the, the texture with the, the coat and that's the, the aim that the designer has gone for. So the other significant personalizations I've done with this piece so far is the coat, the collar, and bandana and the ribbon that the three dogs are wearing at the moment. So with the, the, the tartan jacket that the first Scotty dog is wearing, I've been using a bit of the color and cotton threads that I've gotten from the Black Needle Society. And the first color, the red color that we also see for the ribbon around the third Scotty dog is the colour and cottons. Mum touched the Pope! So Mum touched the Pope. The background for that one is when Rory and Lorelei went backpacking uh, around Europe. I think it was towards towards the end of the fourth season, perhaps, when Rory had graduated from Chilton before she went to Yale and they went backpacking and at one stage mum touched the Pope. So that was the theme behind that thread. And then to to have that sort of grey to, to help have the, the checkerboard, I think that might be where this might be a film by Kirk perhaps. If it's not a film by Kirk, it is the love rocket so it might be more love rocket rather than a film by kirk and the yellows that we see for the the bandana and the collar for the the first two scotty dogs they're just yellows that are dmc threads i can't remember the exact exact numbers but they were i guess just yellows that were close at hand at the time with whatever box that I had in front of me so again it was just me being lazy <laughs> I couldn't be bothered to get up and go and try and find the the yellows that were required for for the collar and bandana so throughout the rest of the piece that's where I'll probably do very similar things with the different collars and bandanas ribbons hats and such that the dogs are wearing and the really cool thing with these dogs as well is that I guess if it's a weekend, whether it be a Saturday, sun, Saturday or Sunday, or now that I'm on holidays, these dogs, if I've got the time, only take me a day to stitch, including the back stitch. And now that I've got a bit of the spacing sorted out for these dogs, it, it should work out pretty easy. It It is a piece where I've had just dedicated all of my time to it. I'd be able to get the piece done in a couple of weeks perhaps. There is just so many other patterns that I want to stitch and work on and other projects that are are already in in my rotation that 
it may not get the love it needs until perhaps December next year. But that's totally okay. That's no worries because I am actually super close to getting a finish done on another piece that's out of this Ultimate Cross Stitch Christmas magazine. And it is the uh, trio of Christmas cards that are designed by Miss Congdon. I need to flick through my absolute apologies for this. Ah, here we go. So Emma Congdon, she designed the trio of Christmas cards called Let It Snow, Jingle All The Way and Have Yourself A Merry Little Christmas. And it is Jingle All The Way that is super close to a finish. So this is where I'm at as of yesterday. I have finished stitching the border and I just now need to do the back stitch and the back stitch is a bit of the back stitch that goes around the border and then it sort of links up um, all these other bells and whistles and bows and, and all the rest that goes with it. So the annoying thing with Jingle All The Way is that the finished piece is sort of in the crease of the magazine so it makes it a little bit difficult to try and show you where where it is and what, what I'm trying to work on. That said, the back stitch that needs to get done on Jingle All The Way, if it comes up today as part of the spin that I do, it'll definitely get done today. So that's going to be super exciting to get finished. And the other really cool thing with this is I stitched it on 14 count Ada on fabric that was in just like a scrap fabric that was in my stash. And the thread that I was using is an Australian thread called Dinky Dyes. And initially when I had done the floss toss for this, I hadn't looked at the back of the tag, but when I did look at the back, at the back of the tag, it's actually called Janie's Christmas. And I think that was just absolutely perfect. So I think it was just meant to be to have those threads and I'll potentially make this into like a Christmas ornament. I, I'm not very practiced at making cards just yet. So we'll wait and see. That said, I do know that if I make more of these sorts of cards that I will most likely make them for some of the people that I work with at the moment. And there's one particular lady that I have in mind who is a very uh, colourful person in a really positive way. She doesn't quite fit into the mould of what a typical public servant is. And I think that is absolutely wonderful. She always is this colourful clothing person. She's got this really colourful personality. And considering everything that's going on in her life at the moment, I think I just love that she is the way she is and with that in mind considering that I'm talking about this trio of cards the other card that I've been working on is called have yourself a merry little Christmas and uh, so this is what it would roughly look like when it's done and this is what I've been working on so this is being stitched on 18 count navy blue Ada and I've been using an Australian design, or not Australian design, it's an, definitely Australian and more specifically Canberran based thread. So it's called Brindabella Threads and this particular thread doesn't have a special name like the Dinky Dyes thread. It is just BT16. I'm not sure if it'll show up very well with the Yeah, it's not going to focus. I'm sorry about that. It's this really nice sort of lime green yellow kind of thread. And I think it just pops so well on this navy blue Ada. And I've stitched, as we can see, all of the words here. My biggest challenge now is going to be stitching the border and the seam that goes around the words. I've not stitched one this one before, so I think it's going to be a really good challenge to do this one. That said, now 
there actually are other cards that I've stitched out of this book and I haven't quite finished them off into to proper cards or anything like that. Oh, I misplaced them, I've got them right here. Okay, so to help him put into context of what Jingle All The Way will look like when it's done, especially if I just use, say, one or two variegated threads, this is a DMC um, variegated thread. I can't remember what the, the numbers are for the DMC threads, but Jingle All The Way has turned out beautifully. And I've just used some scrap cardboard from a box or something like that just to try and stretch it around. I do need to do a bit more fussing around with it just to get it to sit the way that I need. And the really funky thing with this border is that from a distance, it's not noticeable at all. However, if I look super closely at the stitching that I've done, when I was stitching the border, let's say I was stitching beside here, I'd have a fabric around this way. Then I'd turn a corner and I'd stitch the top bit. Then I'd turn a corner again. I'd actually physically turn the fabric around. So from a distance, it doesn't, you can't tell that the stitches aren't quite in a uniform direction. But if you look at it a little bit more closely, if you saw it in person, you would see that, unfortunately, I've just made that numpty mistake. But I don't think it really matters because in the grand scheme of it, I think this piece looks really cool. The other pieces that I have stitched uh, that are like the trio of these uh, cards is let it snow and unfortunately it's not showing up very well here however with let it snow i guess what i'm about to show you here is what it can look like if i do use some of the other variegated threads from dmc so with let it snow with this uh, sort of variegated dark gray to light gray I think it actually turns out pretty cool. And then I really like the variegated green as well. That just looks beautiful. And I don't necessarily have to stitch the, the full blown words of Let It Snow, I don't think. As long as I could find something like maybe uh, a little bauble or, or some other kind of Christmassy themed um, design that could fit in there, I think that could work really well. However, this is what it would look like if I did stitch, let it snow. And it's really cool. And what I did with uh, the bit of the back stitch here and such is using the, the DMC metallic threads. And I think it just gave it that really extra nice sparkle effect that I think just balances out the cotton. So the first piece that I have to share with you is one that could be known as Sweet Christmas Wishes or Candy Express and it's out of this magazine of the ultimate cross-stitch Christmas and this is designed by Christine. Um, I'm not sure how to pronounce her surname. Perhaps Christine Wasseleff. She's also known as Shannon Christine Designs and if you've come across any of her designs before, whether it be as part of browsing the internet or you actually have stitched any of her designs, you'll know that for much of a muchness, they're, they're pretty cool designs. And this is where I couldn't, I couldn't not stitch this. And it was actually a lot of fun to stitch. And the, the piece has a lot of personalizations in it. And one of it is the fabric choice. The next one is that I mucked up with the word Christmas because I had stitched the border before I stitched the words sweet Christmas wishes. So I had gotten up to uh, the M, realized that I wasn't going to be able to fit in the letter A, so I just stitched what I could with that. The additional personalization for this is the outline of the words or letters even, uh, sweet Christmas wishes. If I had my time again and if I stitched this piece again, 
I probably will choose a different colour for the the outline of the letters. So I'd perhaps use still a light colour but not black. So a, a light colour that would be close to as close to the white as possible or it would be say a really light grey colour maybe uh, something from the 400 series or perhaps uh, maybe even one of the specialty threads that I have um, from the stitching boxes. That said when I was stitching the pe this piece I had the intention of giving it to my nephew and when it came time to finishing it, I'm not happy with how, I, how it finished up. So I've got this fabric wrapped around, um, I guess, some styrofoam padding that came from a package or something that I'd purchased over the years. And this is the back of it. And I've used some glue, uh, double-sided tape and other things to, to stick it down and then there's also this uh, special bauble trim stuff. It's a, a ribbon thing, and I've got a pin sticking it down, sticking it down, just holding the end down. And I've also got some double sided tape that's holding the the trim down. And it's something different, and it's part of the reason why I've held on to this piece rather than gifting it to my nephew because. Uh, I go by the logic of if I'm not happy with this finish, then I'm not going to be happy with finishing or not happy with passing it on to whoever the intended recipient is. And it's similar to when I finished the tiger that I did for my best mate. I loved how I finished that and it had that sort of feeling of, oh, I'd like to keep it for myself, which means to me, that I did a really good job of finishing the cross stitch and also how I did the framing. And that's where I felt this immense pride of being able to, to give that to my friend. So I don't feel that same way with Christmas wishes. So I've got it on this little mini easel that I get to still look at and just still enjoy looking at it. And um, it's all good. The next piece that I have to share with you is a pattern that I had purchased online and all of the details of who the designer is, uh, the name of the store and all the rest has, well, poof, I can't remember all the details. I do remember that it might have been a Russian designer or uh, someone from a country that has very similar pronunciations of words to the Russian language. And this is a piece that I've sort of dubbed uh, Jingle Bells. I'm really sorry for all the, the reflection in this because it's got, got some glass. And I absolutely loved stitching this piece. I had so much fun with uh, the, the different colours and the choices that the designer made with this and I'm just noticing how dusty the glass is and that said it it was an absolute joy to stitch on and I I think I got this piece done a lot quicker than I expected to because I enjoyed stitching it so much and it is, this is one that I've been happy to, to keep for myself. I think when I was stitching this, it was definitely just for my own enjoyment and I probably should have it out in my home somewhere that helps with any of the Christmas themes going on. Okay, last but not least is a piece that I finished earlier this year and one that I was just super happy to have completed and it is again a chart out of the what is it the ultimate cross stitch Christmas issue number 18 no rather issue a number 19 from the year 2018 and it is the 12 days of Christmas and reflection is not my friend today and this is just super cool. It is chilling out here in Canberra because being a renter, I don't have the luxury of being able to 
hang things up regardless of what other options are available for sticky back hooks and all the rest and so at some point in time whether we move back here to Canberra or I buy a place up at Wollongong where I know that I can put whatever holes in the wall that I want within reason and not have to worry about the consequences of the owner getting upset because it won't most likely be me getting upset with myself for putting the hole where I did. So this is the 12 days of Christmas and super, super happy with how it turned out. And it, it is something that I'm just really thankful that, that I finished. So this is where I'm going to wrap up now with getting things put away. And I guess next year will be the next time we catch up. So it would most likely be early, early January. And let's get into the plans for next year. Plans for next year. I have gotten so much enjoyment out of using the random picker wheel on my phone that I'm really looking forward to using it next year especially for the month of January and the way that I'm going to use it for January at least is I want to work on a lot of projects that are Australian based or have been designed by Australians and use where I can products that have been created by Australians so in terms of those product products, it would be things like cottage garden threads, or uh, it would be Brindabella threads, or it would be the dinky dye threads, and, and all similar threads, or it would be perhaps uh, any fabrics that might have been uh, dyed by Australians or anything along those lines. Then it would also be cross stitch projects or patterns that have been designed by. Australians. So I would hopefully be working on some projects that I've designed. So I'd be looking to see some more progress on Dew Drop Daisy or any other other projects that you've seen me share with you for most of this year. Or it would even be me starting some new projects such as some of the country thread charts that I've got in my stash. And what I've done is a bit of a Google image search to try and help share with you who I'm talking about. So I've got ring lights that are glaring and I'm really sorry and it's just going all blurry and I'm sorry. What I'm getting at here though is for many Australians here, if you've ever stepped into Spotlight especially, but perhaps Lincraft as well, and you've gone to the cross stitch section and you've been looking, trying to find some charts. Country Threads has typically been the main chart that's been available. And I love that Fiona Jude, who is the designer behind all of these charts, I love how simple her charts are, the way that she's designed them and that there's perhaps 20 colors in the in the whole chart and that if you're buying a kit that it's on 14 count ada which makes it accessible and easy for people to use and to stitch and that was one of the main i guess fiona was the main designer who i'd initially got back into cross stitch with so it was her designs that that I've really come to love and enjoy and used as a springboard for other charts that I've since been working on, finished, and hey, you've seen all the stuff that I've just been working on. And I just love her designs. They are absolutely awesome. And then there's also other designers that I'm thinking of, such as Fiddlesticks AU. And if you hopefully do some, some Google searches and such, and I'll see if I can bring something up here as well. If they're the designs that I'm thinking of with the fiddle sticks, let's see. Uh, 
let's see, hang on, not quite. Okay, so some of these charts that I'm looking for aren't quite what I'm after. So the person I'm thinking of, they have some of these really cool, yes, she does exist with Etsy. Okay, awesome. So yes, what I'm thinking of is these sorts of things where with Fiddlesticks AU, she's got all of these really cute Australian themed charts that look super easy to, to stitch. And some of the things that I'm thinking of are, are like all of these little motifs that are very much Australian themed where we've got um, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, we've got galahs, wombats, snakes, spiders, almost anything that can really kill you here. Uh, we've also got some of the different beautiful fish that would appear, um, especially up at the Great Barrier Reef. And then uh, the trams from down in Melbourne, or we've got um, other modes of transport around Australia that are unique to Australia with how they look. There would be the fairies that we see up in Sydney, then there would also be here in Canberra, uh, some of the really old school bus stops, the bus shelters. It's all those really, really awesome things that just make Australia absolutely awesome. So if I am looking for something that is perhaps a little bit whimsical and uh, unique, I would definitely be leaning towards Fiddlesticks AU as well. And I think she's also got some unique Australian food as well as some of the little motifs that that she's got designed up. So I mentioned just before about the Vegemite. There's also some of the Arnott's biscuits like the, the Tin Tams, the Iced Vovos. Um, they're the, the two things that come to mind very quickly. And she's got an Etsy, so, Etsy store, so, so go check her out. And if you're just wanting to stitch something just on Australia Day, there's uh, there's that as well. And I know that I'm also keen to try and uh, work on a um, Biscor Nu as well that um, was designed by uh, by Mish, 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 Mish Tongue Pied. I'm sorry. Uh, so unfortunately, Mish, Mish stitches. Uh, she used to have a floss tube channel, but she's not doing floss tube anymore. She's taken down her channel and and all the rest, and which I think was really sad because she she's awesome. She's really really cool. Um, I've not met her physically in person, but I've definitely met her via the um, online stitching retreats that. Uh, she did in conjunction with another person who whose name escapes me right now. Uh, it was the Midigong uh, Stitches Retreat, and I think they did that for three years in a row. And I think the last couple of years they had to do it online because of the whole COVID yuck stuff. Uh, but it was it was really cool to be able to to put some faces to names and meet some new people. And she as uh, sells I think a lot of her designs through Abby Abby Top Knot Stitcher. Um, I know Abby's got um, a YouTube channel and that um, Abby the Top Knot Stitcher she's got her own Etsy store as well where she is the procurer of many different chance designs um, products ranging from fabric to scissors to floss and everything in between and that's who uh, Mish was uh, selling a lot of her charts through so yeah definitely go and check out Abby Topknot Stitcher as well for some of the the Aussie designers as well and then there's me I am an Aussie designer I have a hot cross stitching um, as my side hustle and I've got all the details in the description box below for any of any of the charts that you might be interested in uh, purchasing. Next year, I am hoping to be able to add quite a few more to the site. 
I am now on holidays, so I have no excuse for not getting getting anything new uploaded to the website. So if by chance you've been sort of hanging back, waiting for any, something new to come up on the science, I thank you for your patience. And I hope that with some of the new charts that I have des designed that when they're uploaded, you will really enjoy them and they'll be the kind of charts and designs that that you want to stitch that will all be happening in the new year so i will try and do a whole heap of promotional stuff around those new charts when they're ready with that in mind i'm going to wrap up now finish this off and thank you so much for spending some time with me and Listening me, listening to me waffle on a bit and sharing with you some of the projects that I've been working on and hearing me out for some of the things that I'm aiming to do for next year. And until next time, I hope you have an absolutely awesome and amazing Christmas and a wonderful new year, whatever way that you end up choosing to celebrate it. And I will see you next year. Mm -hmm.